So I'm sure you've all heard about these so-called brain games, you know, these apps and things that you can download and play, and they're supposed to stimulate your brain. They're supposed to make you think better and all this other crap, and they're really marketed towards, like, the geriatric ward in order to keep your great-grandpappy from losing his mind. Uh, and, you know, people will buy into it because if they're sitting there looking at their phone all day or looking at a screen, they want to feel like... They're not just wasting their life away, and if you, you play in something that claims it's going to help your brain, you know, there's a lot of psychology behind that, and so people will buy into it. They'll look at their screen thinking they're helping themselves, but actually, there's been a lot of research that has come out that shows these so-called brain games do very, very little for your brain. And they say that your pappy would be a lot better off just going off on a hike and it would actually be a lot more beneficial than sitting there playing one of these apps. But even though these so-called brain games don't do anything for you, it turns out there are actually some video games that do. And Call of Duty is one of them. And no, I'm not making this up. So, in between, you know, hearing how many times your mother's been banged by the 10-year-old on the other side of the mic, it turns out that Call of Duty is actually stimulating your brain and giving you benefits that can actually last for a long time down the road. So, here's how it works. Your brain is constantly trying to predict things. It's constantly trying to build models and figure out what's about to happen next. So, like, if you're in a conversation with somebody, you know how sometimes you finish somebody else's statement. It's because you were planning ahead, figuring out, trying to figure out what they're about to say. Whenever you're driving down the road, you're anticipating what's going to happen next. Your brain is constantly building these templates or models of the world, and it's so that it's not freaked out if something happens that it's not anticipating. Like, your brain doesn't want to see something that it hasn't already thought of because it might just melt. So, what happens is a lot of times, you know, we do this unconsciously. We're, we're not even aware that we're doing it, but our brains are constantly doing it nonetheless. Now, think about a fast action pace game like Call of Duty. You know, once you learn the maps, you're anticipating where people are going to be coming from. You're anticipating what you're going to do whenever you hit that certain point streak and, and what weapon you're going to have that you can lay down. You're also anticipating, you know, maybe where you're going to go or how you're going to grab those dog tags from somebody you just killed. So there's a lot of things that you're actually thinking about that you may not even realize that you're thinking about. And I know this sounds crazy. You're probably thinking Dragon. You're telling me Call of Duty is helping my brain. Uh, because I'm sure a lot of people think that Call of Duty is probably rotting their brain. Uh, but this is science, baby. So here's what happened. A new study just came out in the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, and it recently compared Call of Duty players to non-action players. So they gave what they call pattern discrimination tasks to action video game players and to non-action video game players. And time and time again, the action players outperformed those who didn't play. And they actually did a number of studies, so I'm going to tell you about a couple of them uh, just to show you the, the links that they went through just to make sure, you know, hey, look, could these people just have been born with this gift, with this uh, task of being able to do these tests, and maybe they're just a little bit more gifted? Or is it actually the game that is helping them? So, like, in one study, they looked at whether the game was the source. So they recruited people who didn't have any experience with video games. They took one group and first off, they tested them to make sure that they were on a level playing field. So they gave them the test to begin with. Then they took the groups and split them up. They had one group play Call of Duty for over 50 hours over a nine week period. They took the other group and had them start playing a game like The Sims, something that wasn't action paced. And what they found out was that the group that played Call of Duty improved their templates compared to the group who didn't play Call of Duty. And then they went further trying to figure out and measure the benefits of the group who played Call of Duty. And what they found was that people who played the action game were able to build and fine-tune their templates a lot quicker 
than the non-action game participants. Like they said, it wasn't just some minimal, you know, little difference. There was actually a pretty large and significant difference in these two different groups. And on top of that, they actually went back and tested these same people up to a year later. And what they found was that the people who had played the action games actually retained their skills and their proficiency at this discrimination task. So now these researchers are trying to dive even deeper into this, trying to figure out like what characteristics are actually needed in a video game in order to have this sort of benefit on the mind, you know. They're not saying that, hey, you got to play, you know, first-person shooters in order to stimulate your brain. But there are definitely aspects of the first-person shooter, or at least Call of Duty, something fast-paced, that is stimulating these brains and giving this sort of benefit. And so these researchers are wanting to find out exactly what that is. And of course, if they can figure out what that is, then they can build a game for your grandpappy, and maybe it doesn't involve him having to shoot somebody or having to listen to the squeaker on the other end of the mic tell you how bad you suck or how good your mom sucks. So if you want to read more about it, as always, a link's down in the description box. Post below, let me know, does this surprise you that people who play Call of Duty are actually stimulating their brain. And if you want to continue to stimulate your brain, stay right here on this channel and to VGN for your latest gaming news. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.